Uh, mm -hmm. What are you seeing in terms of this volatility that's really uh, gone through most asset classes at the moment and particularly in the bond, bond space? Yeah, well, you know, the Feds aren't helping matters at all. And um, I think we're seeing a little bit of destruction in bond markets getting led, initially led by the hawkish Fed. But we have to look over at the UK market. Let's look at the gilt market overnight. Just had a hugely rough session again, seeing uh, 10 years are up 24 basis points, 30 years up 30 basis points in a day. This is just unheard of type, uh, type of uh, numbers. Uh, and this is when the bank and the treasury, the Bank of England and the treasury uh, are trying to calm markets. Um, so what, what are we what are we in for here? Looks like things are gonna get uh, worse. Look, this market's in a mess right now. I think uh, looking at the UK um, in the short end of the curve, uh, they're trying to play catch up with the Fed. They're trying to price in a fiscal view from, from the government. Three to five year area uh, is, is trying to price in what's expected to be a paper deluge pay for all the government splurges. And, and we're looking at the 30 year right now. We've got pension funds selling to rebalance their portfolios. So where do you hide on this one? I, I just think you sort of take cover and don't really put a bid in the market right now for any bonds. Is that why you're actually one of your big trades is shorting the British pound? And of course, on the other side of that trade, where do you see the US dollar going? Yeah, I, I do. I think we're in for a little bit more tumult, especially as we move into what I'm expecting to be a winter of despair in the Northern Hemisphere, probably catalyzed around uh, further energy crisis. Uh, I do think energy goes up, and I think this will contribute uh, to a lower pound, along with the malaise that we're having on in bond markets. And probably some, you know, the interest rate hikes from, from the Bank of England are going to be so aggressive that they're going to tank the economy for sure. So my best view right now is I'm thinking pounds around 105 could be fair value going into year end. Uh, China is obviously the next big one to watch. We're all expecting hopefully some sort of announcement on COVID zero, but you hear from the People's Daily uh, really saying today that COVID zero must be maintained, that there is a sustainable path going with COVID zero alongside economic growth. What are your expectations and what are the implications for any hopes of a recovery across Chinese assets? You know, we're, we're always hoping that they're going to step back uh, from these COVID policies, especially over here in Asia, where a lot of the economies are very much dependent on travel. Like I'm in, I'm in Thailand right now. And although we're doing quite well on the tourism side, we're really missing that Chinese influx to drive the economy stronger. But I think this also permeates a lot of other uh, industries within, within the Asian complex. I think markets were fingers crossed, hoping that we could see a pivot. But look what happened in Shanghai yesterday. Look at people returning from Golden Week. And, you know, policymakers are very scared that, you know, these people returning from the Golden Week could spread COVID. Now, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean that we're going to remain in COVID uh, emergency state forever in China? Probably not. I think we may see some easing into the new year, but I think a lot of attention is going to be paid to some of the rhetoric that's going to be coming out on, uh, on this weekend from the uh, party Congress. Stephen, I feel like one of the few things that you're long on is oil. How are you playing the energy story? Yeah, well, oil is a little bit down today. I think we're 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 getting back into the uh, uh, demand uh, cycle, offsetting the tight markets. But I think this is only temporary. I think. Um, you know, as we move forward here, I think demand in the U.S. will continue to remain strong. It seems like the consumers are very, very resilient. China's, uh, although, you know, there's, there's, they're, they're moving back into COVID. There's still evidence of reopening narrative happening in China. Economies continue to do okay. Not great, mind you, but it's still holding up somewhat. Um, although, you know, arguably looking at the PMI numbers that came out, uh, they are quite dreary. But remember, those are backward looking data. We're actually looking to play a little bit forward here here uh, on the oil market. So my, my feeling is, as we move through to the next couple of quarters, I think you can stay long uh, oil either through option markets, or you can actually stay long through the cash, cash markets, both exposures we're in right now. And I'm thinking oil could move higher than $100 per barrel, and certainly into the 110 level if we do move out of that China-related uh, COVID uh, situation that we're currently in right now.